Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what you know about benchmark? Uh-huh. They're speaking the facts that you wanna hear. They rep a jersey, the vision is clear. Diamonds glisten like a chandelier. You know what I'm here for, like Michelle Lynch. It clutch time, we do not flinch. Real brothers, we do not switch. Hit home runs with the right pitch. Who run the city? Ooh. What to do when they hating on you? I feel like Kobe 2010. Taking an L, all I need is a win. This is his business, you know how they go. They playing the seats, now it's time to grow. Tune in now, gotta be in the know. Showtime, bitch, my butter blow. We Woo. know. lock in all right welcome back to another episode of the bench mob podcast we have a special guest today we are joined by kim toledo one of the top photographers in the tri-state area i got put on to her work from uncut remy shout out to uncut remy zach my boy put me on to her work and it's elite work how Thank are you, you? <laughs> how are you doing today? I am good. I'm good. Today was a long day. We both shared that, um, but got to take every day one step at a time. <laughs> I hear you on that one. So we're going to get straight into it. We just mentioned, you know, you're into photography. How did you get into photography? Where did that love for photography start for you? Well, uh, growing up, I didn't really see that many pictures of myself. Um, I come from a divorced family. So like my siblings had a lot of pictures of themselves and I was just like, yo, like, where's Kimmy? So, you know, I kind of made a promise that like, you know, through capturing moments, um, through when I do have a family, like I would, you know, capture every milestone, every um, achievement. But um, I've been an athlete my whole life. So up until college, I played uh, soccer, basketball, lacrosse. Um, And then I decided to not pursue in sports in college. So I kind of thought that I was going to be lost. Mm -hmm. Um, And then senior year of high school, shout out to the yearbook teacher. She was like, hey, can you go take pictures outside of the soccer team? And I was just like, wait, what? Like, I can go take action pictures like what like that just didn't click and then I fell in love with it I spent all day like shouldn't be telling you this but I spent the entire rest of the school day taking pictures of like my friends taking pictures of all the sports um and then I just knew it was meant to bring two things that I love like you know finding and capturing moments that people can have forever um and sports so yeah sports photography is like I feel like meant to be (laughs) That's dope um, to be able to combine both worlds because, like you said, you didn't decide to play in college. So a lot of people, once they aren't able to play anymore, like you said, sometimes they feel lost. They don't know how to keep it going, but you still have a love for for sports. And a lot of definitely a lot of people aren't able to still, you know, work in it. So that's a great dope thing that you're able to still have both worlds combined together. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite sport? You mentioned in three sports you played. What was your favorite? <laughs> um, <clears throat> my favorite sports play was basketball, but um, I was weirdly really good at lacrosse. Um, and I was introduced to lacrosse my freshman year of high school. I went to school in Long Island. So, um, yeah, I was, you know, fast, defensive, um, but definitely had a lot of love for basketball. That's cool. So growing up, who did you watch? Who did you look up to? Or try to model their game after when it came to basketball? So I was introduced to Dwayne Wade, like, right off the bat. Um, That's why three, like, resonates me. I'm the last child. Like, three is my lucky number. Um, Him and Kobe. Like, I've just, on and off the court, everything that they stand for, like, has always just resonated with me, inspired me. Um, But definitely be Wade, yeah. So for you, right, so you started off, like you said, at high school um, as a senior, you were doing the yearbook pictures, you fell in love with it. From there, is that what you decided to study in college? Like, how did your photography progress from there on? Yeah, I actually majored in photography. So I went to LA Post um, in Old Brookville, so 
alumni shout out. <laughs> um, and it is one of the only schools that still had a dark room on Long Island. So we did film photography. So I went there in the mindset that I already knew I wanted to do sports photography. Um, but what they taught me and what they, uh, what I took away from that was tapping into my artistry. So I became an artist at school. Um, I learned how to take portraits. I learned lighting. I knew um, concepts, composition, um, just learning about like the history of it all, like the technicalities. I was just, I feel like that's my one up sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like I understand things a little bit better. And then the fact that I was an athlete, like I can tie like artists and sports and just like create another world, you know? <laughs> That's definitely, I think that's a, a key word just said, because you look at some of your photos, it is art. It's not just, <laughs> I'll put it this way. It's not something that, you know, the IT <clears throat> photographers can do. Like this is actual, as you said, you know, the skill and you know, the, the, when you look at it in the basketball enhancement, you have the fundamentals down, you know, yeah. exactly. All right. This angle and why this angle, while some other people are just like, right, let's take a photo and they think they get a photographer <laughs> and it's not, it's not that simple. Um, for you though, how do you stay sharp and on your game? Like when it comes to the photography? That is a great question. Um, so I, I like to challenge myself, like athlete competitiveness, like that's just natural. Um, so if I'm in a situation where I am in the same gym or with the same athlete, um, I try to, you know, do a different angle or try a different concept because you can get bored. And to be honest with you, I truly believe that how you feel or where your mindset is when you're shooting, that's going to translate into what you're capturing, what you're taking, the end result. So um, if I'm bored and I'm just like holding on my shutter, that's not doing anybody anything, you know, like that's not giving the athlete the art that they were expecting from me. Um, so yeah, I definitely try to challenge myself. Uh, I definitely <laughs> am way too hard on myself. So, um, my worst enemy right here, <laughs> but, um, yeah. And also like trying to find inspiration in other people. So, you know, like seeing something and saying, okay, maybe I could try that. Or how can I incorporate my style into that? You know, always evolving is definitely because the whole world is evolving. <laughs> yeah. I Definitely could see that. Um, two things I definitely wanted to ask in regards to that, like you said, so you don't want to have the boring mindset and just be sitting there and having it on the shutter. So what do you look for um, in the angles and whatnot when you are taking photos of these athletes and does it change depending on who the athlete is? Uh. I do believe it changes depending on who it is and the type of relationship I do have. Um, if I know that this is my one workout or my one game, um, I know, you know, the list or the basic shots to grab. Um, but what I try to do is capture moments. So motion. So I look at a lot of body language. I look at a lot of faces. Um, most of what I photograph, I feel like, like you mentioned before, like you felt like art, like gallery, like, so the way my mindset is, is if there was no Instagram, would my photograph be up in a gallery? Would it attract an audience? Would it attract viewers? So that's how I think when I photograph, because I want to be able to have something that, you know, that lasts, you know, somebody thinks about it five years from now and be like, yo, that was the buzzer beater. Or I remember where I was that day, that time, how I felt. So I want to give off always, um, feeling mm. yeah. do you think, i don't know if there is one but do you think one day you would want to have like a photo gallery of all your work because i think oh, what yeah that would be a dope thing because I, I mean i could be wrong but i haven't seen many sports like art guys where it's just sports photos and things and like of course we got the museums <laughs> and all the different art but just sports i don't think i've seen that yeah, um, it's actually pretty awesome that you said that because I saw, well, I in school, we had to do gallery shows. So what I produced had to do with sports. So yeah, I've definitely hung my artwork up and have had people look at it. But recently, I think in like the past year or two, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Johnny is Aquerdo. He actually had uh, just like sports, just his journey um, gallery. And 
I'm sure he's going to have another one. And it was, it was awesome. Like his, I don't know if you know him, but he's like pretty good. He's pretty talented. Um, So yeah, I'm sure there are like, you know, here and there um, little shows like pop-up shows. People do host that, but for like a gallery for a solo show, like that's such a beautiful thing. Like that's a great thing to accomplish, to be proud of, you know? That would be dope. Uh, Send that to bench mom when you do it. (laughs) For sure. Yeah, uh, totally. <laughs> mentioned Kobe, right? So how do you translate mama mentality into your work? Huh, to never, to accept the mistakes, like the happy mistakes, you know? Um, wait, sorry, hold on, I'm about to put myself. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> um, <Okay>. Mom. <laughs> All right. Uh, mama mentality in my work. Um, yeah, like to stay sharp, you know, like consistency, um, and to accept the happy mistakes because, you know, anything can happen. Um, especially when you're shooting film, like light leaks, dust, um, when you're shooting digital, you might've missed the shot that you wanted. You might've, uh, thought of another shot after, but to accept like what happened then and there and how you can be better next time. Now you photographed MBA, college, high school, athlete, which did you have the most enjoyment in doing? The most enjoyment? That's, that is a very good question. Um, I'll go based off of the most freedom that I've had. Um, recently for, you know, COVID reasons, pre-draft was as long as possible. Um, I had the greatest opportunity to work with Precious Sachua. So, you know, having that freedom to create any art that I wanted, uh, any videos, um, you know, whatever I captured, he was definitely open to. So that was very enjoyable. Um, But also there's nothing like shooting a game, like all the excitement with the audience, um, being around all the different emotions within that. Because you're not just looking at the game, you're looking at everybody else watching the game because that can entice like, um a lot of emotions and you know eye-catching aesthetic so definitely in a game like I haven't shot an NBA game yet so I can't really say that but I'm sure that's gonna definitely be top five but um yeah my experience with pre-draft and like uh high intensity like grassroots games yeah so within that right you play basketball you're a fan of the sport how difficult is it to not get drawn in into the game Especially those games where, like you said, it's high energy. They just have a big play. Somebody gets a dunk out, catches a body. You have to still stay in there to get that shot. Yeah. Okay. I will be completely honest. In the beginning, especially if I knew who was on the team or if I was rooting for that team, it was very hard um, because, you know, I started as a 17-year-old, 18-year-old. So, you know, I'd get heated and, you know, say things to refs when you're not really supposed to with media. So I definitely learned with my experiences and um, learned that I'm a professional. <laughs> um, I can't necessarily show people who I am um, rooting for, you know. Got to play both sides, got to capture just and document. I'm there to document, you know. Um, I can root for my teams just properly and keep my comments to myself. <laughs> But no, I've definitely have gotten lost in the whole um, upset, like, you know, last five seconds of play, and then I miss it because, like, it was my team that lost the ball, or um, a bad call where, like, I should have been getting the emotions of the bench instead of being in that (laughs) conversation. Yeah. How is it for you um, being a female in this business? Do you go through any struggles? Are you widely accepted? Especially a lot of the photos you're doing are with male athletes. How is that experience being a woman photographer dealing with male athletes? Well, I've been blessed with the athletes that I have worked for, respected, respectable, um, awesome, amazing human beings, very genuine. Um, But in other jobs and other situations, there are struggles, um, especially because I look really young. Um, I'm extremely nice. So uh, people say I have a resting, you know, face. So um, when you do come up to talk to me, I definitely am very approachable and I help as many people as I can. 
but I do have to honestly say it's hard. It really is um, because I feel like we have to prove ourselves with every single job. Whereas in another aspect, you know, like somebody, a word of mouth of like, you know, my homie's good. Like, okay, so I'll hire them. Like for me, it's like, oh, like, what is she really here for? Is she really here for the job? And it's very frustrating to have to fight that narrative. But us as women, especially in the sports world, we have to fight off that narrative that it is more than just the work because I can tell you how many times that I'm just like locked in, zoned in. I go in there and I do my job. Um, Cause that's what I'm there for, you know? Um, but it's definitely takes a toll on the mental health. I will admit that. Um, but I do see a lot of women who are out here shooting for teams. So that is definitely giving off a lot of inspiration to get through the, not little things, but things that I expected. Um, it sucks that it's something that we have to expect or accept. Um, but I do believe like with the WNBA, a lot of advocates, a lot of people are talking a lot more. And I do believe that, you know, women should be photographing whomever they'd like. Um, and I photographed WNBA players before, but I have a big clientele of uh, males. Yeah. But I love sh- photographing like women's sports, uh, grassroots. Just, it doesn't matter to me because it's all about the story. It's all about me telling their story and me being there um yeah <laughs> i think that's dope um i think it's important i wanted to ask you specifically because that's an important conversation to have especially like you said in the sports world it's often that they aren't women when i say they aren't accepted in the sports world and they're given a harder time i have three sisters both have played basketball all the way up through high school and part of college so i can i've seen firsthand yeah. how things are really different just wanted to hear, you know, your experience for it. For anybody that wants to get into sports photography, what is one piece of advice that you would give them? Oof. Um, go for it. Like, you know, especially right now, a lot of people are in limbo. Uh, maybe you lost a job or, you know, you're just trying to keep your mental health going. Uh, pick up a camera, do a couple things with your phone, try different things. but definitely just go for it because figuring out if you want to do it and like trying it is better than like oh I wish I would have tried it or I wish I would have done it um and don't get caught up in the whole what kind of camera I have what kind of equipment I have because it's really not important um and I honestly believe that if you start with what you have and you can get to a point where you do get a better camera, a full frame or something that can help you on a more professional level, professional grade, it's going to be a million times easier because you were able to produce magic with what you had in front of you, you know? So like being able to figure that out and not discouraging yourself because you don't have what you see sports photographers have, or you see the grades have, or you even see like your, the person next to you has. Um, because to be quite honest with you, I've seen people who have really great equipment, but the product doesn't match, you know? So it really doesn't matter. Um, and YouTube ask questions. Uh, I'm relearning premiere and it's a lot easier now because there's a lot more videos. There's a lot more people helping. Um, and it's not a secret. Like what we do isn't a secret. It takes experience. It takes a lot of determination. Um, it takes a lot of grit. <laughs> so if you want to do it, if you feel like you can do it, definitely try. Last one before we transition into our with the quickness segment. <laughs> Where do you draw inspiration and motivation from? Ooh, that is a very good question. Um, lately, I've been in kind of a creative funk. So uh, I try to draw my motivation and inspiration from non uh, traditional things. So I like to shoot with a film camera here and there. So now I'm buying film again and I'm trying to get my head out of the space of what I love is work, work, work. It's, it's what I love to do. So I need to find that again. Um, and I take self portraits, not a big picture person, but like nobody else is seeing that but me. <laughs> um, 
I definitely try to uh, go back to past projects and recreating something else because you feel a different way when you're editing like from now and then what it was past. Um, and definitely picking up a new skill. I am an advocate for that and I do have to follow my own advice. So now I'm relearning Premiere Pro. Um, but I will say that it's very easy to be discouraged. It's very easy to, you know, want to get to where everyone else is. Um, but what is the saying? Like Rome wasn't built in a day or like it, it just doesn't happen overnight. And, you know, you see it all the time. Everybody shows you exactly where they are. They don't necessarily show you the mental, like the physical, the emotional journey that they had to go to, uh, through. So I feel like talking to people um, definitely helps motivate me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just also being in the gym, like that's my safe haven. So if I'm in the gym, like uh, everything clicks. I'm just like, all right, I'm ready to go. Like I can do this, that, you know, for um, next time. But I did want to wrap back to like women in sports because I do believe like, especially now with the, um, I changed my following. Like I changed uh, what I see every single day because that was definitely taking a toll on my mental health. And there are a lot of women who are, you know, advocating and stepping and being the first of a lot. And I think that now more than ever, we all have to, you know, share their voices, share our own voices. So like, I'm just very blessed to, you know, have people that I can follow in their footsteps. Um, WNBA, like broadcasters, like just new owners, just everything. Um, women sports photographers. Uh, you don't see many, but they're, they are there and they are really, really good. Um, so, you know, just look for them and support them, support us, support everyone. Um, and I always say like to be authentically yourself because it, there's no point in being somebody else. So, yeah. Definitely <laughs> send, you know, send those our way um, so we could follow them too. But with you mentioning mental health and it's Mental Health Awareness Month, this is actually the last question before you transition because you mentioned it. And I kind of want to ask it, especially with it being the Mental Health Awareness Month, even though it should be every month. Yeah. What do you do to maintain your mental health and keep you in a, a good headspace? <laughs> that is what I'm still honestly figuring out. Um, I am blessed to have people in my corner who remind me that I am good, um, that I can do this. Um somebody who is really amazing in what he does his name is Courtney that's actually his Instagram but Courtney a friend of mine he works for the Cavs amazing videographer photographer but amazing person like he taught me this thing where we modify how we go on Instagram so like for that for a while that was helping but um I also realized that I needed to react better to things so you know it's take it day by day mm -hmm. meditate uh working out definitely is an amazing thing listening to music. Um, I try little things because I haven't really found my, like my, okay, like Kimmy, you're good. Um, writing things down has helped in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, just being alone and zenning out and just reminding myself, I have like affirmations all over my room. So, you know, just like zoning out and just reading. And there's, I, I read somewhere that, um, the way you speak to yourself is the loudest voice because you are alone most of the time. So if you're not talking nice to yourself, that that's all you're hearing. So no matter what the other person says, you've been already telling yourself negative things for the past 24 hours. So if you start, you know, reading things more positive or saying more positive things to yourself, I think like positive affirmations definitely help too. Well, that's great. Um, that's huge. And if you ever need a reminder, we will definitely remind you of how <laughs> great you are. Um, but like, it's good to have those people in your life that are not only mentors in your line of work, but are actually yeah. good people. So we all need good people in our life to sometimes, we all need that reminder sometimes. And you said something that was so great. How you talk to yourself is so, so important. It doesn't matter. You could have David Stern, God rest his soul, come to you directly and say, yeah, your photos are elite. We want you to work for the NBA. But if you've been telling yourself, 
that you aren't good, it's not going to matter who says it to you. Exactly. Exactly. And that's something that I've learned recently. And it's, it's hard because like, I can say it now, but you know, like earlier today, I was having a hard time and I'll be completely candid. Um, it's, it's hard, but yeah, as, as long as you can honestly be honest with yourself, because if you're lying to yourself, that's also not um, a good thing. So if you're honest with yourself and you have the right people around you, then, you know, it's, it's there's hope. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Like you said, is taking it one day at a time, yeah. one hour at a time. It's, it's 24 hours in a day, long days, things happen. You could wake up feeling great, then by noon, something happened. So taking it one day at a time, one hour at a time, and staying positive within yourself and having the right circle around you, something that you also said that was really good. You had to choose who exactly you were following because you need to be very careful what you're seeing on your feed. Exactly. That is major, and especially for those that are on Instagram so much, like a mm -hmm. lot of screen time, you got to watch. And especially if it's part of your job, you want to see something that has to do or that motivates you. Because if you're sitting there and you're like, this makes me angry all the time, then it's really not for you. As much as you love that person, like you can love them or you can admire them, you can respect them. But if that's really not doing it for you, then, you know, take a little break. Yep, that's the smartest thing. You got to look out for yourself and be honest with yourself. Yeah. Transition. <laughs> segment. First, I think I'm avoiding this rapid fire right now. <laughs> first one, what's your go-to meal? My go-to meal? Tacos. Tacos. Oh, hey. I'm good. Okay, yes, I got this. You talked about it, so I just let the tacos. What soft shell or hard shell? Oof, hard. Hard shell? Okay. I'm a soft shell type of guy, but I can, I can get down with hard shell too. Yeah. What's in your musical rotation? Oh, right now, J. Cole. J. Cole. Oh, of course. New album. Trade Fire. And since we just mentioned J. Cole, top five, we're just going to leave it broad. Top five musical artists for you. Your favorite five. Ooh. Okay, so grew up on Eminem. So it actually, if I'll send you this song that he says Holy Toledo in. Oh! He says Holy Toledo, yeah, in one of his new songs. Because it's a saying, like in Ohio or like in general, it's like trying to say, oh my God, it's Holy Toledo. So that was actually my nickname in high school. <laughs> um, but yeah, Eminem. Um, oh man, this is hard. Definitely love J. Cole. Oh man, like since high school. Ah, oh, who are we going with? Okay, I have to stand by. Always loved Ed Sheeran, like that. Just his voice, beautiful. Um, so it's three, right? Mm -hmm. Um, why is this hard for me? All right, are we about to go to Spotify rotation? Oh, I listen to a lot of Haitian music. I'm Haitian and Ecuadorian, so that's definitely in my rotation. Like, um, Jay Perry, Michael Blanc, um. So, I'm sorry. You a fan of I can't. Oh yeah, are you kidding me? Every my Haitian household, every Haitian party. I love it. I love it. My friend put me on when I went to William Patterson. Got in the car. I'm like, yo, what is this? It was like, oh, this comp. I said, oh, I need this in my music. <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome! So I'll send you a couple of Haitian artists to actually look at. Cool. Yeah, I I love me some Kova. I legit uh, the whole block growing up. It was like little Haiti, my block, so that's awesome. That's awesome. So you already know. You got you know good music then. <laughs> one more. I need one more. Uh this is who I listen to the most. All right, we're about to go off of Ooh. Oh, but come on. But we got okay. All right. I'm gonna go Bruno Mars for this one. Okay. Because when when it's hard, when it's hard times, he definitely no, wait, John Legend though. Oh all right. You gotta give me like I gotta get back to you with like a top twenty. <laughs> uh, top twenty? I got you. 
<laughs> I'll email you. <laughs> hey, that's a solid list right there. I got to know they're all on my Apple Music rotation, so that's a solid list. What is your, you might have it now, what is your dream ideal camera? Um, it was what I have now. Um, I photograph with a Sony A9 Mark II. Um, but I, uh, I started shooting with Canon and the fact that Canon is coming back up and, you know, matching what Sony does, uh, I would say like that one DX. I don't really know much about the later Canons anymore since I switched to Sony. Um, but no, I I'm solid with. I call my camera Jesus. I'm solid with Jesus. So yeah. <laughs> God, who is your pick for NBA champion this year? Uh, well, diehard Miami Heat, Miami Heat fan, right? Her. Um, Let's leave it at that, because <laughs> if we don't, like, I just. <laughs> so you guys, are matched already... up, you guys are matched up again with Milwaukee. You beat them last year. On the bench mile, we chose, we chose Miami beating Milwaukee. Do you think, with y'all being a sixth seed this year, that they're going to beat Milwaukee again, back-to-back -back seasons? I do believe with what we have to keep proving and the grit and the people on the team and how – evolving like no matter each uh, each game win or lose how evolving it gets that we will because you know we have <sighs> it's always about like heart you know like in the end of the day it's about like how much heart and how much you play and how much energy like they always say ball don't lie right so the way you play really doesn't lie about um so if your mind's not there and you're off that game like that can retaliate to anything so I do believe with the mindset that they have and where they're going that, yeah, if we keep our heads high and we keep tight and together, yeah. Two more before we get you out of here. Again, we thank you for taking time out of your schedule. If you had a choice to photograph one of these two events, what would you choose? The NBA Finals or the World Cup? That is a tough one because you can tell so many stories within both. Um, I want to say finals for my love of the game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm going to go with finals. I'm going to go with finals. NBA finals, all right. Yeah. Who would be your dream athlete to work with if you haven't already? Yeah, if I could photograph Dwayne Wade and I'm sorry this may look really bad but I just you know like idol right there like since I was a kid um I've actually done work with Zaire Wade uh in the past but like I would love to work with uh Dwayne Wade definitely that's dope yeah like that like he's just so uh his personality is just so him like i don't know how else to explain but he's like you know like you know <laughs> i get it, I get it. Um, and if he was still here obviously kobe like just everything he stand he stood for and just that would have been i would have died happy that would have been good um i did actually it was mellow I did actually have the most amazing opportunity to photograph Mello. So he's still on top five. I would love to work with him again. Um, but so, yeah. So like some of the athletes that I do work with, like I'm big fans of them as people and then their game. So like, I would love to always work with them again. Um, and then, you know, obviously meet and be able to tell stories of other athletes. Like, yeah. Complete sidebar before the last question, because I am a huge fan of Mello, his swagger, <laughs> wine, Tuesday, like everything about Mello. Like I started wearing fedoras and messing with <laughs> cars because of, because of Mello. Like that's what really put me in. How was it working with Mello? Like, oh, it was, it was amazing. I always tell people, like, I felt like I was there watching people hang out and like friends, like it was, it was awesome. I, that was 
he was definitely like one of I mean but prior to that I worked with JJ Redick um and uh other NBA athletes but like he's New York like he's I'm okay. sorry JJ but like he's Carmelo Anthony so like at first I was like oh Kimmy what are you doing and then I was like no wait this is awesome and then as soon as I met him I was like yo like all right that's Carmelo Anthony <laughs> um but definitely down to earth like they were just having a ball and like to be able to be there and experience like friendships within the game and then like the same kind of love level for the game like through training through um the bond that him and Alex uh his trainer have like yeah that was definitely a great experience and like a uh, great introductory to like what I do do now yeah that's dope one yeah one day I got to I got to get him on the show some way somehow. You do. No, he's definitely definitely a mellow and like chill dude. Yeah. Yeah, I even on his wine too like like I said I'm a huge <laughs> a mellow and more so. Of course, we already know on the court Hall of Famer, but off the court Yeah. He's that guy. Like he's like he's going to be yeah. like hearing the story I'm completely going off off, you know, what I'm supposed to be asking. But no, you're good. <laughs> complete side story, like when Lala was talking about this is when I think he still was with he first came to New York and they had a dinner. It was a Jordan dinner and just talking about how down to earth he is. Two o'clock in the morning, Mello was going to the corner store to get a sandwich and she like, babe, you're Carmelo Anthony. You can't do it. He's I'm hungry. Exactly. I'm hungry. I'm like, yo. How can you not love a guy like that? Like yeah. two o'clock in the morning, six eight, Carmelo Anthony, NBA player, millionaire, is going to get a sandwich from the bodega, like, and doesn't even think twice about it. Doesn't think twice in a robe. Like, come on, you can't. How do you not love a guy like Melo? That's actually with the persona that I want. I want to be able to wake up two a.m. in whatever you know, the future brings and just be like, I'm going to go and get myself a sandwich, like in my robe. <laughs> exactly. Go get me a sandwich. Like it's not there. I, <laughs> I'm Kim Toledo. I'm one of the top photographers in the world, but I just want to. Oh God. Yes. Your lips to God's ears. <laughs> Last one. I think I could probably guess based on our conversation so far, but five people dead or alive that you would like to have a meal with. Oh, well, I would love to see who Eminem actually is. Like, that mm -hmm. is, like, um, Barack Obama. Amazing. Oh, and he has to bring Michelle. So does that count as, like, three people? Michelle's always coming, so. Because actually, like, I would really love to meet Michelle more. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so, yeah, we'll, like, package them. I mean. First, first lady, so, you know. Um, so yeah, uh, D Wade, I have to have a meal with him. Um, I would have loved to have like actually spoken at least two words to Kobe, for a fact. Um, and last, that is. <laughs> it's gonna be cheesy, but I would love to have a meal with my grandmother again. Like that would be amazing. <laughs> that's, not, that's not cheesy at all that's actually dope to have family members um there with you especially you talking about a table like this with some of your mentors and people you look up to of course that's not cheesy yeah she would she would have been so proud of me like i could and like i said i'm haitian so like in our culture like in the past you know stigmas is that you have to become a you have to have a profession in like the medical field or like lawyer or like like you know even being a teacher was kind of like it back back in the day looked or frowned upon mm -hmm. um and i'm just extremely blessed to have been in a family that you know didn't put that on us so my mom's a teacher um and my grandfather who i never met the only person in my family i was told that like and randomly, I would always tell that my personality is just like him. He's the only person who took pictures. So, like, that's just, like, you know, like, weird things that you find out. And you're just like, wait, what? And he was an engineer. He was an architect. So, he was very artistic. Like, um, but she always didn't really understand photography or understood why, like, 
I wouldn't you know, continue school because I did go for my master's. Um, but she just, you know, she didn't understand like the stability of it. I mean, being a freelancer is really hard. Um, you That's why it takes a toll on your mental health, mental health. So you have to like be very aware of that. But um, she was always supportive. So that was the biggest thing was that she didn't understand it. And that goes for how she, who she was as a person because she didn't really, English wasn't her language, but she learned English to communicate with us. So you know, like she didn't understand it, but she supported it and she loved it. So like for her to be able to see that I was able to, well, I'm making money off of what I love to do. Um, and that like, she was always my biggest fan for any sport that I played. Um, so yeah, to be able to tie two things that I love together, I'm sure she would have been like, all right, I see it now. <laughs> She's like, all right, okay. That's so dope. But again, thank you. Kim Talita for taking time out of your schedule for hopping on with the bench mob. Um, I think it's safe to say we have the title already for the show. This episode has to be telling your story through photography because that's what you do. You tell stories. Hopefully somebody that wants to get into the field or anybody in general was inspired and motivated by your thoughts. I, so. <laughs> I believe so. I think it's super great. I think you're dope at what you're doing. Definitely send us some of the other female photographers so we can support yeah. and follow them. Um, that's what we try to do, especially on the bench mob. We have enough, not to say you don't support them, but we have enough of the male photographers, athletes, but we need to be able to support the females also, just like you saw in the bubble, the NBA players being supported to the WNBA. Mm -hmm. Oh, nobody likes to talk about it, but the WNBA, is actually kind of been the forefront of all the progression that's been happening before even the NBA. So the WNBA has yeah. been doing their part. So we need to do our part too of actually supporting. But y'all know the Vaz bench mob. If you <laughs> ready, you ain't gotta get ready. Bench mob, we out. Peace. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> hey.